surrounding the Golden Gate simply disappear. Phyllis, Phyllis, who makes the warning bells on the cable cars play the gangs all here. Phyllis, Phyllis, who charms the crabs on fishermen's wharf right out of their shells. Who lights the lamps of Chinatown just by something I've never told another living soul? <laughs> when I was eight years old, I took piano lessons. <laughs> Your secret's safe with us. <laughs> no, it's much deeper than that. I started when I was eight years old. My teacher said I was extremely talented. She said if I practiced hard and applied myself, that someday I might be another Chico Marx. <laughs> so I did. As soon as I came home from school, I started to practice. I used to put books on the bench so I could reach the keys. They couldn't get me away from the piano. Once our toilet was overflowing and my mother couldn't call the plumber because I was sitting on the yellow pages. <laughs> Anyway, the time came for my first recital. I'll never forget it. The auditorium was packed with friends and relatives of all the pupils. When my turn came, I, I got up, I walked out on stage, curtsied, said, my name is Phyllis. I'm going to play the minuet in G by... Ignace Jan Paderewski. <laughs> then I, I sat down at the piano and I played absolutely brilliantly. <laughs> and then it happened. I froze. I couldn't remember the next note. I just sat there, terrified, embarrassed, humiliated. Funny, my teacher came up and, and led me off. My parents came backstage to collect me. <laughs> the tears were just streaming down my face. My father sat me down on his knee, put his arm around me, looked me in the eye and said, I've been paying six dollars a week for this. <laughs> From that moment on, I've never been able to touch a keyboard again. <laughs> I've often wanted to start taking piano lessons again, but the memory of that horrible night with all those people staring at me has always stopped me. And it's a shame, too, because I love music so much. <laughs> no, it's not. It's, it's, it's all right. I'm sorry. I, uh, take all your lunch hour. Uh, my silly story. Please go on, eat, 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 eat. No, 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 no. I'm not really hungry anymore. Mm -hmm. oh. Neither am I. Really? Story always gives me such a huge appetite. I'm starved. <laughs> Audrey, Jonathan, I found a piano teacher. Oh, I didn't know there was one missing. <laughs> Jonathan, I've decided to take piano lessons. That's nice. But it's more than nice. I'm overcoming a fear that I've lived with for 30 years. You see, I used to play the piano as a child, but I stopped because of a traumatic experience I 
suffered. Isn't it strange how those childhood experiences can affect the rest of our lives? When I was four years old, I was on a teeter-totter with my cousin Charlie, and we were having a wonderful time going up and down, up and down. And then Charlie played a trick on me, and when I was up, he jumped off and I came down. It was terrible fun. Well, I wasn't hurt, but I was so frightened that I won't get on a teeter-totter even today. <laughs> Wouldn't you get on one with me? Dear Jonathan, I'm so sorry. You know I'd do anything with you, but not that. Anyway... <laughs> this is a darling piano teacher, and I'm going to take my first lesson on Saturday. You can't imagine what this means to me. That's splendid, Phyllis, but won't you need a piano to practice on? Well, uh, there are these piano studios on Market Street you can rent for $5 an hour. Oh, well, that's so far away. Wouldn't it be easier to buy a cheap second-hand piano? Well, yes, but I couldn't impose on you bringing a piano into your home. Besides, where would I put it? <laughs> you could put it in Jonathan's study there. Oh, I couldn't. I, I wouldn't feel right. Phyllis, if it means that much to you, go ahead and get a piano. No, no, really. We insist. You two are so good. I don't know how I could ever thank you. Oh. Okay, guys, you can hoist it up. <laughs> So it means so much to Phyllis to make a good impression on Miss McDermott. Oh, she's as nervous as I was on my honeymoon. <laughs> well, let's just hope Miss McDermott's as good a teacher as I was. <laughs> that was an excellent first lesson, Phyllis. Uh, same time next Saturday. Oh, um, Miss McDermott, you met Audrey, but you haven't met my daughter, Bess. Oh, well, Bess. <laughs> you have a very talented mother, Bess. Oh, she must get it from me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's amazing. I haven't played the piano since I was a little girl, and yet, as soon as I sat down at the keyboard, it all came back to me. I even remembered a piece I once knew as a child. Oh, isn't that extraordinary <laughs> after all those years? I know. After those many years. <laughs> yes, after those many, many, many years. All right, Audrey. What's <laughs> that on your book, Phil? Oh, <laughs> Miss McDermott gave me a, a gold star for my scales. And that's very rare for a first lesson. You see, I give all my students a copper star, a silver star, a gold star, or a platinum star, depending on how well they play. Oh, it must be very difficult to get a platinum star. Only once in my 35 years of teaching have I given one, and that was to a young man named Howard Mittelman, June 14, 1948. He must have played very well. Oh, no. I was just sloshed. <laughs> anyway, I was so impressed by your playing. I'm going to let you play at my annual recital next month. Recital? Yes. You see, once a year, my best students give a recital for family and friends. I couldn't, but what would oh, I play? I, you could play that little piece you played at the beginning of the lesson, Minuet in G. The one you remembered from when you were a little girl. Many, many years ago. 
Really, Miss McDermott, I'd rad rather not play in public. Oh, now, nonsense. You have a gift. You must share it. But I couldn't. You don't understand. Oh, Miss oh no, no, no. Now I won't listen to another word. It's all settled. The recital is in three weeks. Oh, really, Miss McDermott? I, I couldn't. You, you don't understand. It, it, no, it, it, no, no, now, 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 dear. I know you're feeling very nervous about it, but that's only natural for any artist. I remember when I gave my first recital in Paris, and I learned that Toscanini was to be in the audience. I was terrified, but I went through with it. You played for Toscanini? Yes. And afterwards, he came backstage and spoke to me. Oh, what a thrill that must have been. What did he say? I've never forgotten his words. He said, Miss McDermott, I don't care for your playing very much, but do you fool around? Here it is, right here. Why don't you all go in and find seats? I'll be right back. I want to get a drink of water. Oh, good luck, girls. I know you're going to be just great. Oh, I hope so. I do want you all to be proud of me. Now, don't worry, Phyllis. Even if you make a little mistake, nobody's going to notice. Oh, Jonathan's absolutely right. We're going to think you're wonderful, even if you stink. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Audrey. And don't worry, I'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Julie, what am I going to do? <laughs> I'm absolutely terrified. I'm absolutely, completely terrified. I just can't play tonight. I can't do it. I can't play. Oh, Julie, what am I going to do? Don't play. <laughs> but I have to. I, I have to prove something to myself. It's the most important thing in the world to me. Then play. I can't. My brow is sweating. My heart... Beating a mile a minute. Did you ever see I am shaking like this one? Yeah, that one. <laughs> hey, Phyllis, how you doing? Hello, Leo. <laughs> I, I thought I'd uh, take a few pictures, you know. Oh, no, Leo, really, I'm not in the mood for any pictures. Oh, please, come on, really, Phyllis, Leo. just just one, please, just Leo, one. I'm not in the mood. Julie, what am I going to do? I'm so afraid I'll freeze up the way I did when I was a little girl. You'll just have to go in there and, and make up some excuse for me. You'll think of something. Tell them that up. That you're an immature, spineless jellyfish who isn't showing up tonight because she hasn't got the guts. That's good. <laughs> Phyllis, it's only natural for a performer to be a little nervous when she has to appear in public. In fact, probably the better she is, the more nervous she is. Oh, and I must be terrific. I'm ready to throw up. <laughs> It's no use. It's no use. Down, I can't go in there. I can't go in there. I can't go in there. Thanks. I needed that. Julie, I'm sorry. I'm okay now. Right, come on. Uh-oh, here it is. Don't sit over there. Sit oh. here with the, the rest of the perform. <laughs> Students, we're about to begin our program. So if any of you has to go to the bathroom, I hope you'll take care of that right now. <laughs> Don't they all look darling? That's my daughter in the green dress. Uh, that's my mother in the ruffles. <laughs> We're so proud of Margot. You know, she's not only an accomplished pianist, but she takes ballet and acting, too. And she gets straight A's in school. Phyllis can really hold her liquor. <laughs> Good evening. I'm Marjorie McDermott. And I want to welcome you to our annual recital. All of the 
My students have worked very hard this year. Instead of staying after school and playing with their little playmates or watching TV cartoons, they've hurried home and have practiced their little hearts out so that tonight their mummies and daddies and uncles and aunties could be proud of them. So why don't we show them just how proud we are of them. Stand up, students. And now, our first performer will be Miss Margot Griffin. Margot is 11 years old and has studied with me for four years. Margot. Oh, I'm so nervous. Oh, you're going to do just fine. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> I'm going to play a waltz in E minor by Frederick Chopin. And she hasn't been studying with me very long. Uh, when did you start to play, dear? 1943. <laughs> A very good year. <laughs> Mrs. Phyllis Lindstrom. I shall now play the minuet in G by Ignis Jan Paderewski.
are. Don't you want some coffee and cake? Oh, no, thank you, dear. Sit down. I did it, didn't I? Yes, Phyllis. And I was good, wasn't I? Yes, Phyllis. I was really good, wasn't I? Yes, Phyllis. I mean, I was really terrific, wasn't I? Yes, Phyllis. Oh, you're just saying that. <laughs> of course, I did freeze up at first. Think anybody noticed? You mean that little pause you took? I think everyone thought it was part of the piece. <laughs> Phyllis! You know something I've decided? I'm going to give you a platinum star for your concert tonight. Oh, Miss McDermott, you mean I played that well? No, I'm sloshed again. <laughs> Watching ALN. Here's what's coming next. <laughs> 